right, all right. Good morning, morning, morning. Happy Saturday, everybody. If you don't mind staying on mute, uh, put any questions into the chat. My name is Jonathan. We always like to give everyone a couple minutes to get in to the room. I know myself, I'm running behind every now and then. Uh, so we'll give everyone a little bit of time to jump in. Um, slowly, surely. <clears throat> Our project manager, Dev, is on site already. It's a beautiful Saturday morning again. The, the fall, the weather's good for the most part. I got uh, a little kid's birthday party this afternoon, so we're going to go on a hike before that in Oswego. So from Chicago to Oswego, that's a long drive. I'm in Logan Square. If you guys want to share where you're at, feel free to throw it in the chat. What's up, Daniel, Quincy? Good morning, everybody. Thank you guys for joining us. Oh, Bronzeville. Bronzeville, probably one of my favorite, by far my favorite Chicago markets there is. I actually, uh, I'm probably going to be moving in the next like year-ish, maybe year and a half, and for sure, I would love to move in that kind of like southeast corridor down in Bronzeville area, Hyde Park, South Shore. Really, I like all those areas, to be honest. I think if you're looking for some long-term wealth, high appreciation markets, like it's going to be in that southeast corner corridor. Ooh, far side, southeast, so far southeast. We're... Is that by like East Chicago, Isabel? I know I have a couple of friends who invest in East Chicago. So I like that area too. Strong cash flow. I, I, is East Chicago actually in Indiana? Does anyone know? Yeah, right on, right on the border. That's exactly what I was thinking. So good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Give everyone a minute or two left. We're on site uh, here at one of our projects in Little Village. Um, this took a little while to get going on this one, but now we're moving and grooving in a much better pace. <clears throat> Anyone have any fun plans the rest of the afternoon? I think, like I said, I'm going to a three-year-old birthday, you know, getting crazy in Oswego. So way Oswego. So it's way, way far west. Anyone close any any awesome deals lately? Anyone do anything cool this weekend? Oh, going to look at some properties. Well, that's what's up. Oh, the walnut room with the fam. Dang, that's a that's a that's what's up. Uh, we used to always. I'm from Elgin, Northwest Side. We used to always go down to. Is it? It's Macy's that has the windows, right? Uh, the Christmas windows, or is that? Yeah, I think it's Macy's, but yeah, we used to always go down there and check out the the windows. So, but yeah, if you guys continue to throw any questions, comments in the chat, be much appreciated. We want uh, as many questions as possible. So if anything is on your mind, even if it is completely irrelevant to the project and you just have some general questions on renovation, permitting, zoning, any of that stuff, does your team partner on a new build? <clears throat> so yeah, we get that question a lot because I think a lot of a lot of investors see the new build as a sexy play. We've done, ah, uno, one build, one new build. Uh, it was actually, we partnered with myself, yours truly, uh, on a project where I had a double lot and I'd done a gut renovation on the two unit. And then we built, a, we started our company basically on that project. We did a ground up single family in Bucktown ended up selling that for 1.1 million so one of my one of my affirmation is i'm i'm open-minded and so yeah we're always open-minded a lot of times those those partnerships they they just don't work out not because of the two partners but really because of the money it takes to do these new construction houses the margins are super thin uh one of my best friends and mentors he's done 100 plus single family houses over one to two million dollars and you know you're making money on the volume and the ability to scale in that world so super tough market to get into not opposed by any means 
but uh, super challenging. I would say that for sure. But like anything else, once we build the systems, the processes, we repeat the same things over and over again. We learn from the issues we had on past projects. Everything gets easier and easier and easier. Uh, so yeah, with that said, we yeah we got a decent amount of people in here. I don't like to go much past five past the hour, but yeah, my name is Jonathan Clem. I'm the host of the Chicago Quality Investors and the founder of Quality Builders. Our goal with this virtual walkthrough is is we just want to give everyone kind of an inside look at at our projects and kind of show people uh, what what we're about, things that haven't gone well, things that have gone. Well, things we've learned, things we're going to do different. Uh, each one of our projects seems to be uniquely challenging in different ways, whether it's, you know, different type of financing, different type of uh, extension, addition. Uh, and so I think, you know, the more we can share and collaborate as a group, uh, the easier everything gets for all of us. So, yeah, we're of the abundance mindset here at Quality Builders. We're a Chicago general contractor, and we're really focused on technology and trying to streamline our systems and processes to make the renovation process much easier for all of you investors and homeowners out there alike. Our goal is just to educate on renovation investment properties. That's the basis. And we always start every meeting with praise and gratitude. Uh, we start every meeting even at our own job with praise and gratitude. So yeah, I'm always grateful for everyone showing up in the morning. And on a Saturday, uh, I always remind everyone, people who are doing this on a Saturday morning are different than everyone else out there. Most people aren't hopping on the <clears throat> look at renovation, figure out other things. Um, one of the ways that we actually give back at Quality Builders is through the True Value Boys and Girls Club. I'm on the board there, and they actually have a Youth of the Year program where Three members from the True Value Boys and Girls Club put together a presentation. Uh, we actually get to listen to it. Uh, there's about three to 400 people uh, that go to Mi Tierra down there in a little village, actually not far from our project, actually. And uh, then the winner of that youth, youth of the Year local chapter gets to go to the Chicago-wide event, which is at Navy Pier. There's actually about like one or 2,000 people that attend, so a huge event. And yeah, then these kids get a scholarship uh, to go to school uh, for college. So we always ask anyone, everyone, if you are even remotely capable of donating anything, five, ten dollars at, at at least, uh, would be greatly appreciated. I got the QR code up there, even if you can't do it right this second, uh, which I ask you guys to do. But uh, yeah, if you can donate there. But yeah, like I said, super happy to have everyone here this morning. Always um, grateful for that. Um, like I said earlier, one of the things we're trying to do at Quality Builders is just kind of change the name of the game in construction. We're super heavily focused on on our technology, streamlining it. We've actually get like really kind of like revamped what we're doing, um, kind of rolled back to the basics for us and resetting up a lot of our schedules um, to be just more systematic approach just because we've had a couple of projects that have taken a little longer than they should have more recently. But so every one of our clients gets set up with this portal. You'll see uh, we set up a contract price, uh, super detailed contract. Uh, we track all of our change orders, our selections. That's one of the main things we've done most recently is, is set up this selections portal. So that way we're far in advance ahead of knowing if there's any issues with lead time, any issues with... Uh, cost overruns on allowances or anything like that. And so we set this up at the beginning of every one of our projects. And then we use the rest of our system to keep everyone up to date with what's going on in the project. So we send you guys a weekly report uh, with photos and videos of what's happening on the project. <clears throat> and then we keep our schedule up to date as well. And then we also typically meet with our clients either once or once a week or every other two weeks. So. That's kind of what we're about at Quad Builds as far as technology goes. I got my partner on site, Dev. Oh, there's a couple other people here who need to jump in. I'm going to unpin myself and spotlight Dev. If you want to give yourself a real quick introduction, Dev, I'm off mute, my friend. Hey, guys. Uh, happy Saturday, everyone. Uh, 
thank you guys for joining us. Super excited to show you guys uh, a little bit what we've been working on at this project over here. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. All right, so he's on the outside. Usually how we do this is he's on site. I'm here at the office. I've got the, the plans drawn up so you can see it's a two-story unit with a basement. And this project is a little unique in the sense that uh, we're taking it over from another contractor that wasn't able to complete the project. It's, uh, yeah, like I said, a two unit with a basement, full gut renovation, so down to the studs. When we took it over, Dev, can you, can you remind me of the exact state of the project when we took it over? It was pretty much down to the studs and there was some mechanical electrical plumbing done, but none of the plumbing or any of that had passed, right? Uh, the HVAC, so yeah, there's a, there's a big jumble. Essentially, nothing in the basement. The first and second floor uh, plumbing supply lines were run. Uh, the vents were run. Uh, mechanical ductwork was run on the first and second floor. Uh, and that's about it. And I think we passed plumbing and HVAC inspection somehow on the first and second floor before we took over this job. But uh, yeah, no work in the basement. And then, uh, yeah, no, uh, just connecting the HVAC system and not, uh, no electrical too. So yeah, that was the status. And then most recently, um, kind of where the project's at, we've just poured the basement slab. We've done the underground plum plumbing, um, which passed inspection. And we have the framing that we just completed in the basement. I'll go ahead and share my screen as well so you guys can see that. And I'll give you a quick overview before Deb hops in the basement. I know we got some guys that are working today. Uh, so we might have to jump, might have to go on mute a little bit. But here's the overview of the project. I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but it is a two or three K project. So uh, we're dealing with the inspectors that way. Can you guys see my screen? If you can just, anyone give me a thumbs up or a chat message to let me know, that'd be super helpful. <clears throat> so yeah, as you can see, this is what the project looked like. I'm assuming you guys can all see my screen. If you can't, let me know. Any, any indication would be awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, so here's the demo plans. Uh, basically, you can see like nothing crazy here. We basically have to take out everything that is there to begin with <clears throat> and put it all back in a little bit better configured way to make it a little bit more economical. Down in the basement, you can see, oops, you can see here uh, we poured three new footings. We actually got to keep the existing beam line. Um, that was there. Um, it was actually some structural steel that was already in place in the basement. And then the proposed, oops, sorry. So the proposed basement is empty. Um, and then the first floor is going to be a two bed, two bath, uh, so in the in the basement dev we have the a framing plan i know as well do you know what the layout is can you walk down there and, and kind of walk us through what it looks like because i don't have that uh, on my current plan set yeah we don't really have specific plan set uh for the basement framing that's part of the stamp set uh, so oops. Uh, this is the basement here. Uh, so we got the living room. Oops. Here the walk-in fly utility room over there. The closet. Yeah, I'm not, I don't think we're done with the framing yet. So I'll uh, add some things. Let's see if I can chime in here. Yeah, so still to go in the basement. Um, we'll have to finish up our framing. We have a rough framing inspection um, that we'll have to call out uh, for the city. Uh, we still have insulation to do. 
I know there's a couple of things that I called out uh, with some of that electrical wiring coming in on the side. So we had a new electrical service as well. I know we need to do some caulking over there, some sealant in that corner. <clears throat> but yeah, generally speaking, uh, it's, it's a pretty, it already had decent height. I think we ended up gaining about another four, four inches, four to five inches when we um, replaced the slab. And we, of course, had under, under drain and, and uh, drain tile put in uh, anytime anyone's doing work in the basement. It's just an absolute no brainer, in my opinion, to do the drain tile. If you're investing in the long term, you can see here's just looking at the sump pump and the injector pump. So sump pump, just for clarification, right? Sump pump, basically the way the drain tile works is it goes around the perimeter of the house um, you, under the concrete, and then you have a dimple board, they call it, basically a rubber membrane that goes up the side of the foundation and that will wrap around um, your pipe. And then that pipe goes around the entire perimeter and then drains into the sump pump. <clears throat> that sump pump um, obviously pumps that water into your sewer line. Uh, differently, the injector pump, that's also always typically right next to the sump pump, that's actually for your bathrooms. And so um, that's gonna actually pump the water up from below. Um, so that way, if you have a, a sewer line that's actually above that you can pump the water out through the sewer line. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna share my screen again real quick. We have the first floor. First floor, two bed, two bath. These are decent sized units. I, I like the layout here. Um, myself personally, um, I'm big on keeping thing as uh, keeping everything as as functional as possible. So basically, when Dev walks back out here, you'll see um, he's gonna walk up this door here. He's gonna go into the first floor unit, and you have kind of an open concept. Uh, you can see we installed this bigger header here um, to open up this entire unit. Previously, it was pretty well boxed in. You can see um, it, had, it had this wall here previously. So uh, we got rid of that, opened that entire wall up uh, to make it more of an open concept. And like I said, the framing was done. Uh, we did have to do some modifications to it. <clears throat> and basically, you got the L kitchen. Maybe had, had we been involved a little earlier, I could see us um, suggesting some type of island here. Um, just to give yourself a little more countertop space and make it a little more of a sociable kitchen, opposed to just the L kitchen. Once he goes through, you can see we got the one bedroom in here. Um, this is decent size bedroom, so 10 by 11, um, big enough for a king size bed, um, definitely not the super small standard Chicago style. And we got in-unit laundry here as well. Um, neither bathroom is an ensuite. This one here at the very back is a half half bath. And then this one here is a, is a full bath. All right. I'll spotlight Deb again. Oh, wow. I wasn't sharing my screen the entire time. No one was going to tell me. That was embarrassing. Okay. But well, what I was saying was, you can see Deb's going to walk in here. Um, yeah, we got rid of this beam. Uh, we would have put an island in here. Um, we have two beds at the back. We have a half bath at the way back, which I'd always suggest the half bath actually probably should have been closer up to here. So it could be used for people who weren't using it. Um, and we have the full bath here. Um, I'll re-spotlight Deb next time. Anyone who's on, who's on the computer, let me know. Um, you guys can all see Dev now, right? Um, he's on the first floor walking into the main unit. So we started drywall here. <clears throat> One of the more interesting things is we need to get gas meters installed here. And in order to get the gas meters installed, people's gas 
actually required us to have some some form of some type of appliance for the gas to check for leaks. So I actually had to install that heater that you see there on the left um, so that we could get the gas mirrors installed. Uh, so people's gas came out, got it installed. We wanted to get the heat on, obviously, as soon as possible with the colder weather. And, you know, with the drywall and mudding and taping, it's, you know, takes significantly longer to get that stuff to dry without the heat on. So that was definitely a priority for us most recently. <clears throat> so this is the main front room. He's going to go towards the back of the house. All those videos a little choppy, at least it is for me. So <clears throat> hopefully he has a little better service here. Yeah, so he's in one of the bedrooms there now. Is in bedroom one. <clears throat> but yeah, we can't see your video anymore, Dev. So, oh yeah, this is the furnace room. So now he's at the very back of the house. Um, that's a wa stack of a washer dryer. So there's in-unit laundry. And then that's bedroom two in the back and the half bath is to his right, so. We got R19 insulation all the way through the house. So R19, R20 is going to typically fill the cavity of the two by four wall. Typically your ceiling insulation is going to be R30 or R37, depending on how big your cavity is. But these renovations, you're, you're always basically required to fill the entire cavity that you have. Um, make sure you have the proper insulation in there. So yeah, Dove's gonna go up to the second floor now. It's not, it's a pretty similar layout, although it's much bigger. Uh, our client is going to be living in the property. <clears throat> and so you'll see it kind of has a much bigger, much larger open dining room. <clears throat> I'll quickly share my screen again. So you guys can see when he walks up to the second floor. Um, actually going up the back so it's got a back it's gonna go up the back um it's got a much bigger now you guys can see my screen right is anyone in the chat available to see my screen quincy daniel you guys can see my screen now um okay beautiful so yeah he's gonna come up the back so this is the back area again so pretty much an identical layout to unit one um, if you walk into the back, you have the half bath here, stack of washer dryer here, you got your furnace and hot water heater, utility room right here. Big difference in this unit is because you have the stairs below here. We have this huge open space here as well. So this is definitely kind of more of like dining room over here. Now it's a living room in here. I'd still say we should talk to our client about putting in some type of island. Uh, like I said earlier, just because uh, it just feels very small in the corner. There used to be an old fireplace as well. Uh, Quincy was asking about the square footage of the unit. I want to say they're about 900 square feet. Uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, so 1,100 square feet. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, each unit's 1,100 square feet, two bed, two bath. So that's that's a good size, two bed, two bath. You know, has really nice uh, full length closets, which you don't always get. Um, this bedroom itself is 11 feet wide with the closet. It's 13 feet, 13 foot five by nine three. Same thing. You have 11 foot by 10 foot. Yeah, so these are great size bedrooms. <clears throat> Standard. Standard bathroom, five by eight, you know, you're, you're, that's always going to be the way it is in a lot of these old Chicago houses, just because of the width of the property lines. You're going to have a single vanity toilet and tub nine, nine times out of 10, eight times out of 10, unless you're knocking down a ton of walls. Um, as far as everything else goes, I'll uh, get Dev back on here so you guys can see his screen again. 
Um, so yeah, he's in there on the second floor. So you can see those are the stairs to the right now. I think we have a much better signal now. So yeah, he's going to go up there. We're going to build a half wall in front of where he's at as kind of like a railing. And then the kitchen's going to go over in that far corner in the kind of L shape. So we got can lights already in the ceiling. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'd say one of the more difficult parts of the project is just getting everything passed on the initial inspections when you're taking over someone else's work. It's always challenging. <clears throat> because you also have to get, you know, our guys on board, our electrician, plumber, and mechanical contractors to come and inspect it. And so there's this cost that is variable to figure out how, how much work it's gonna take to get something up to code. So um, that's been a challenging project, a challenging thing on this project in particular. Deb, anything else come into mind as far as challenges um, in your mind so far? Uh, I think we're pretty caught up on finishes and things like that. Um, I know the schedule has been a little bit drawn out. Any other kind of lessons learned that come to mind for you? Uh, not really the major one. You kind of brought uh, at least the topic on. Um, yeah, no, the, uh, when it, when it, well, I think that's the biggest problem that we've faced so far. This project is just taking over on their subcontractor. And so you really have to make sure we have all the missing scope of work uh, in place to give the best estimate and to be it would have a smooth job. So yeah, as you want to be taken over so, uh, on the subcontractors, definitely make sure you understand what needs to be fixed before taking on, on that project. That's all I said. That wasn't, didn't we have some other like minor, minor issues with the underground plumbing that we had to get fixed um, from the previous contractor? Uh, there wasn't really any problems that we needed to fix from the previous contractor. We just had a, running with the inspector in, in, in the sense that I think there were a few things that he he passed the underground plumbing, but he still wanted a few rough plumbing items to be fixed before we could pour out the concrete. So that uh, stressed out maybe the schedule a little bit, but uh, no, there wasn't anything um, specifically wrong with what the previous subcontractor had done for underground plumbing. We need to fix. So, yeah. So, I mean, he's going to end up with three units, um, basically 3,300 square feet. Um, the project Cost is roughly between 275 and call it 305, $310,000. Um, so just, just around a hundred, a little over a hundred, a hundred dollars a unit or a hundred dollars a square foot, a hundred dollars a unit, which is pretty much where we're almost always in line with, with a full gut renovation, especially with pouring a slab in the basement. <clears throat> Schedule timeline should be somewhere between five and six months, uh, maybe a little bit sooner than that. <clears throat> Does anyone else have any other questions? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest difference, yeah, so Titan had a question about the cost per square foot, would it differ in Little Village versus Lincoln Park? I think the biggest difference you're going to find is, is in the finishes. And so, you know, here we might be doing a luxury vinyl plank, which might be, you know, three to four dollars a square foot installed. But if we're doing a pre-engineered hardwood in Lingham Park, you know, you're looking at eight to ten dollars a square foot. So I think the biggest variable is material. Uh, you know, for us, like we want to provide the same quality of work in Little Village versus Lincoln Park. I think there's just going to always be a lot of, of different add-ons uh, when you're going to a more a higher an area that has a higher ARV of, of properties in general. They, they might have crown molding on their cabinets. They might want nicer cabinets. And so like generally speaking, the labor, you know, might be a little bit more expensive because you just have have some people who are are, you know, providing a higher quality of, of carpentry or details. But generally speaking, 
the biggest variable is going to be the price and materials is is what i'd say <clears throat> Round up in DuPage County. Uh, yeah, we're we're like I said, one of one of my affirmations is being open minded. So we're open minded uh, and always looking to help people out any way we can. Uh, that's why we put these together to <clears throat> get people on the same page with with how we're operating. Uh, we're always looking to get feedback to operate in a better way. Um, so. Yeah, we should have this project wrapped up in the next two two months. I I think we're at the, like the beginning of January, the end of January ish, uh, maybe a little earlier. So yeah, we're taking on more projects right now. We have a, a pretty good project coming up in in Elgin area, so that's not too far off. Yeah, one of the biggest pushes we've had recently, Daniel, is on our cleaning and things like that. So. Appreciate that uh, comment because yeah, one of the the struggles is is keeping job sites clean. I can't uh, can't honestly express how difficult that can be sometimes. So, any other last minute questions that I can help answer everybody? Any questions about us, our business, any other Chicago permit questions? We did start using the express permit process now, which has come in handy. So express permit process actually allows you to submit um, plans for plumbing, not electrical yet, uh, and mechanical things um, without an architectural stamp um, that previously you had to use before. And so um, basically they want to know the, have a plan with the scope of work, uh, but some of the things that previously needed uh, architectural plans for can now just be submitted uh, with a general plan overview. I had a question about 100 hours for a foot place at the high end finish, mid grade. Yeah, that definitely probably in the lower to mid grade. <clears throat> also, you have to remember we had to work in the basement and, and do the basement slab as well. So, <clears throat> usually, uh, uh, as far as like price ranges go, it's a question we get pretty often. Usually, I'd say something that's kind of like apartment turnover. Um, you should be expecting something between like the 10 to $20 a square foot. If you're doing something that's cosmetic to us, cosmetic means anything in front of the walls. So cabinets, countertops, trim, flooring, light fixtures, uh, switches and devices. Uh, we're, we're usually in that kind of 45 to $65 a, a square foot range. And then for anything that's a full renovation uh, inside of the building, we're usually in, around that kind of like 90 to 110 dollars a square foot uh which wouldn't include anything on the exterior so you know if you're digging down if you're adding dormers uh these are some of the projects we've been working on recently that are quite a bit more complicated and don't fit into that dollars per square foot bucket very easily but uh we're always happy happy to team up brainstorm costs with you guys uh, i'll share my screen really quick and if you have any specific or immediate needs um, that we can help with. You can scan one of these QR, co QR codes uh, and set up a consultation with us. If you can follow us on Instagram, we're trying to up our Instagram game as well. We've, we've kind of re reset that uh, just because we weren't really as happy with some of the content we were putting out there and it just wasn't getting the traction and engagement we we're looking for. So. Uh, Quincy, I have one more question. How does your team handle walkthroughs for possible jobs? So, yeah, so we charge for walkthroughs, and that's just because we value our time. Uh, you can set that up on our website directly. Um, we charge $197, and we actually put together a high-level overview of the project for you. So we'll detail out a rough scope of work. Uh, we'll give you kind of a range of what we'd expect the price to be in. And then we'll give you the same type of range for the timeline. If you want a detailed proposal, we actually make that 100% refundable if you ended up going to work with someone else. Uh, and, and in that case, we'll actually come to the project. We'll um, draw up a floor plan for you. We'll create an entire scope of work. 
and then put together a detailed proposal and, and timeline as well. So all that can be done through our website. If you scan that QR code, um, or if you go to our website, www.qualitybuilders.com, all that information can be found there. If you guys have any other questions, you can feel free to reach out to me directly um, at Jonathan at qualitybuilders.com. Or you can email us at info at qualitybuilders.com, visit our website, or find us on any of our social media channels. Um, appreciate all you guys joining this morning. If you guys have any feedback on our walkthroughs, and besides a little bit of the choppy video, um, which we can't really avoid, but uh, appreciate you guys jumping on Saturday morning. And hopefully we can help you on one of your future projects. And even if we're not the good fit uh, for you, like we're always happy to give feedback, advice, uh, and help anyone one along their journey as much as possible. So have a wonderful Saturday and enjoy the last of the last of the nice weather. Talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye.